So for problem 64, this problem is not a hard problem, but it can probably take uh, maybe three to five minutes to do all the calculations. And then if you miss if you miss a button, then you have to start over. So I think this calculator is perfect for this problem because it'll can turn that three to five minute problem to a one to two minute problem. And you can actually see what you're typing in so you don't have to worry about if you missed the button or not. So um, we need to find the percentage of claims that are within one standard deviation of the mean. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our data table, so type data, and we're going to input our x value or the claim size number. So 20, 30, enter, 40, enter, 50, 60, 70, 80, and we're going to type our associate, type in our associated frequency, so 0 0.15, enter, 0 0.1, enter, 0 0.05, enter, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0.3. Alright, and then we're going to do our calculation. So second, stat, one variable calculation. So the data is in line 1, and your frequency is in line 2. So go over to line 2, press calculate. So it actually gives you x bar, and it gives you standard deviation. We can't, we can't use those at the moment. We have to exit the data table first. If not, if we press enter, these numbers will be entered into the data table. So I press second and I'm going to press quit. Now I can go to second stat again. And now we have a new variable there, which is three. It's got stat bars. You can hit three and we can actually use these in our calculations. So we're going to use X bar. We're going to add one standard deviation to that X bar. So go to second stat again, stat bars. And there's our standard deviation. So X bar plus one standard deviation, 76. And then it's going to hit um, go back up to that value and hit it again and we're going to subtract it so now it's 33 so we need the percentage of frequencies that lie between 33.2 and 76.79 so that's going to be the percentages that are between 40 and 70 or that are including 40 and 70 so it's going to be 0 0.05 plus 0.2 plus 0.1 plus 0.1 and you get 0.45 which is answer A Okay, for question 100, what you're gonna, you just need to find the calculate the variance of x. So x can either be zero, one, or two. So you're just gonna hit data again, and you're gonna type. Sorry, I did, I didn't clear it from the last problem question, so I'm just gonna hit data again, press four, and it clears everything. So x can be zero, one, or two. X can be zero with a frequency of one over six. So type in one over six. It can be zero with a frequency of 1 over 12 and 1 over 6 based on whatever value y is. So you need to add those together. So 1 over 12 plus 1 over 6. And this follows the rules of PEMDAS. So you can just enter it in just as I did, 1 over 12 plus 1 over 6. And then it can be 2 um, for three different values of y. So you're going to enter, add all those values of, all those frequencies that correspond to different values of y. 1 over 12 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6. Press enter, then you're going to do your stat calculation. So press second stat, and it's going to still be one variable statistics. So one, the data is in line one, frequencies are in line two. Calculate, and you still need to exit your data table in order to use this, this information. So press second quit, then second stat again. Now you have the option to hit three. So I'm going to hit three, and then I'm going to go down to my standard deviation because I want the variance. So I press four, square that. I have my answer in fraction form. I'm going to convert it to a decimal, press that, and now I have the answer is 0.5763. And the answer is actually B, which is 0.58. So there you go. Okay, so for problem 114, we just need to find the variance of Y given that X equals 1. So we know that X equals 1 when Y equals 0 at a frequency of 0 0.05 and x equals 1 and y equals 1 at a frequency of 0 0.125. So the first thing we're going to, we're, we're trying to find the variance of y. So go to your data. So press data and go to your table again. I forgot to clear it again, so I'm going to press 4 and clear it. I'm going to hit data again and press 4. Alright, so we have y equals 0 and y equals 1. So when y equals 0, x equals 1, the frequency is 0 0.05. So type in that. Press enter. And then when x equals 1 and y equals 1, the frequency of that is 0.125. Press enter. Second quit. Second stat. And you're going to do one variable stats. 
data, line two, was where frequency is calculate. Uh, press second quit again, and then second stat. You're gonna do your, your three var, three var stats. Press four, and give you your sigma. We need to square it, and then we need to turn it into a decimal. The answer is 0 0.204, which will be C.20. Okay, for 116, you're going to calculate the conditional variance of the annual number of tornadoes in County Q, given that there are no tornadoes in County P. So we're going to condition for no tornadoes in County P by just um, looking at the top row, where County P tornadoes amount equals zero. And so we know that since we're taking the variance of Q, we know that there can be zero, one, two, or three tornadoes in County Q. So press data again. Uh, we're going to clear our data. So enter the amount of tornadoes that can be in county Q, zero, enter, one, enter, two, enter, three, enter. Then we're gonna enter our frequency. So the first one is 0 0.12, 0 0.06, 0 0.05, then 0 0.02. All right, we're gonna quit our table and then press second stat. One variable stats, data's in line one, frequencies are in line two, calculate. Here's our standard deviation there, but we can't use until we press second quit again. Press second stat, go to three, standard deviation in line four, square it, and then hit this button to turn that into a fraction. Enter is 0 0.9856, which is D.99. So this is problem 231. So the problem says calculate the variance of n given that n plus s equals two. So the first thing you want to do is Look at all the values for n and find if find the values that if you were to add s to it, it, it will equal 2. So starting with n equals 0, we know that s has to equal 2. If n equals 1, we know that s has to equal 1. And if n equals 2, s has to equal 2. And we know that n can equal 3 or more. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and hit your data button. Turn the calculator on first. Hit the data button. You're going to type in all the, value, the possible values for n. So it's going to be 0, 1, and 2. And then you're going to type the frequencies that correspond. So we know that when n equals 0, s equals 2, and the associated frequency is 0 0.10, so type that in. When n equals 1, s equals 1, the associated frequency is 0.18, type that in. And then likewise for n equals 2, the associated frequency is 0.112 for s equals 0, so type that in. So now you have all your frequencies entered, and so you're just going to press second stat which is our second data, which will give you the stat. You're gonna do one stat bars, your data is in line one, and your frequencies are in line two. You press calculate. So now it gives you all the, the data or the information that you need. So here's your standard deviation. We can't go ahead and select it. Now we have to um, exit out of the data table first. So press second quit, and then go into second stat. Now you're gonna hit three for three bar stats, or you can just go down to it. And then you're gonna find your standard deviation, which is that sigma x. So you can either press four or go down to four. I'll press four. So you can just square it to get your variance. And it's gonna output into a fraction, so you can just hit this dandy button here, this handy button here, and it will turn that fraction into a decimal. So your answer is 0.5475, which is B.55. Thank you. Okay, this tip may not be as useful for P, but I found it useful for FM. And it just helped me with the quadratic equation so I didn't have to keep entering the value. So the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna I'm gonna store one as A, I'm gonna store two as B, I'm gonna store one again as C. So I'm gonna say A equals one, B equals two, and one equals C. And I'm actually gonna type in the quadratic equation formula. I know I can use different variables, I don't have to use A, B, and C. I just found it easier to remember the formula. So I'm going to do negative b plus second square root b squared minus 4 a. You have to press the arrow button to type in c all over 2 a. Now this is useful. Now that answer has no relevance to me because um, I didn't set my a, b, and c up to where it would give me the answer that I want. But this formula is interesting. So if I ever need a quadratic equation, I can just scroll up and find the formula again 
and notice that I did plus here, so now I can do minus. Just so I just change it to a minus sign, and I get the other root. And so, like I said, this is handy. So if I have an, I have one problem, I can use A, B, and C for that problem. And then later on in the exam, if you have another problem where you need this formula, you can scroll up, find the quadratic equation, and just change your A, B, and C. So let's say A would equal two this time. So store A as two. So I'm sorry, yeah, store A as two. And then let's say B equal nine. I'm just, I guess off the top of my head here. And let's say C equaled one. Now I can use, scroll up to the quadratic equation and I can solve it for different variables. And I can use, do the minus one as well, find the other root. So I just thought that was useful, uh, more so for FM. All right, thanks.